Good day, learners. It's Mr. Flanagan here. I trust you guys are doing well and that you are preparing well for your first assignment. The first assignment is a multiple choice question on learning unit one and learning unit two. And it will be uploaded by not later than the 19th of March. All right. We are going to have an overview of learning unit one. Now, in learning unit one, we are discussing what is economics. We will look at the CAPS document, we'll also look at the economics teacher. Right. Our second slide does tell us we must first look at the introduction and the assessment criteria. Now, if we go to paragraph 1.1, we see there is the assessment criteria that you are supposed to be or fail with. Where is it now? After uh, completing this assignment, you should be able to explain the concept of economics, identify the importance and general aims for guiding the teaching and learning of economics in the FET phase, distinguish between the implicit and explicit aims of economics as a school subject, specify the role and responsibilities of economics teachers in and outside the classroom as stipulated in the CAPS document. Now, if we go to the CAPS document, I'm sure every one of you has seen the CAPS document already, because this is your third year, you have done visits to schools, although you were not necessarily required to teach, but I will encourage you to teach as much as possible to get the confidence of teaching. So this is the what the CAPS document look like. There you have the foreword by the minister. You need to read through that. You can if you need to. And the contents, it tells you what you need to do. What the CAPS document covers, the background, the overview, etc. All right, we're going to look at the first two sections today. Now, section one is introduction to the curriculum and assessment policy statements for economics, grade 10 to 12. Although they say it's the introduction to the curriculum and assessment policy statement for economics, grade 10 to 12, you can go check any CAMS document and you will see that the background and everything here is the same for all subjects. In other words, they tell you what is the national economy the National Curriculum Statement NCS stipulates policy on curriculum and assessment in the schooling sector. And then they say, well, how did this come about to improve implementation? The National Curriculum Statement was amended with the amendments coming to effect in January 2012. In other words, 11 years ago, a single comprehensive curriculum and assessment policy document was developed for each subject to replace subject statements that we had before that learning program guidelines and subject assessment guidelines. All these things caught, caused a lot of confusion. Teachers didn't know whether, whether they were coming and going, and that is why all of this was replaced by a single document that came into being, namely the curriculum and assessment policy statement. And there they tell you, comprises the following, National Curriculum Statement, the NCS. Don't confuse this now with CAPS. Ne? The, the National Curriculum Statement represents a policy statement for learning and teaching in South African schools and comprises the following. Curriculum and Assessment Policy Statement for each approved school subject. So CAPS is just one of the documents that makes up the National Curriculum Statement. 
a policy document, national policy pertaining to the program and promotion requirements of the national curriculum statement. And the policy document, national protocol for assessment, grade R to 12. Now, when you get to a school, in your first teaching post, your HOD will ask you that you must have these three statements in your educative file. Very important. And they say the national curriculum statement replaces the two current national curricular statement, namely that and that was replaced. Right? The national curriculum statements contemplated comprises the following policy documents, which will be incrementally replaced by the national curriculum statement grades R to 12 during the period 2012, 20 to 2014. So first caps was introduced for grade tens, then those grade those same grade tens in 2013, they were in 2011, 2013, then the next year they were in grade 12, 2014, grade 11, 2014, and 2015. So the first exams on caps was written in 2015. So you need to read through that. Then the general aims of the South African curriculum, as I said, it's the same for all subjects. It gives expression to the knowledge, skills, and values worth learning in South African schools. The national curriculum statement serves the purpose of, of equipping learners, irrespective of their socioeconomic background, race, gender, physical ability, or intellectual ability, with the knowledge, skills, and values necessary, necessary for self-fulfillment and meaningful participation in society as citizens of a free country. It provides you access to higher education. In other words, you know, when you were to apply to university, you had to have a certain score. And those scores you have obtained from writing the exams for gaps. Facilitating the transition of learners from education institutions to the workplace. In other words, this statement intends that when you're done with grade 12, you should be comfortable in a workplace and you should be able to do certain things. Is that really the case? We can discuss that. Providing employers with a sufficient profile of learners' competences. Those two goes together. Now. What can you do after grade 12? When you go out and work, will you, for example, will you be able to do a set of books if you did accounting at school? Because that is what the intention was of the TEPS curriculum. Then, what is the principles on which the curriculum statement is based on? Social transformation ensuring that the educational imbalances of the past are redressed and that equal opportunity, educational opportunities are provided for all sections of the population. You know, this is has been more or less achieved where you can attend any school that you want to, depending on your financial ability to pay in some instances. All right. Active and critical learning, very important. Those are the buzzwords in education today. The learners must participate actively in their learning and they must be, they must not just accept what the teacher or anybody in society says, but they must think critically. Encouraging an active and critical approach, approach to learning rather than the rote and uncritical learning of given problems. Yes. High knowledge and high skills, progression, content and context of each grade shows progression from the simple to the complex. Human rights, inclusivity, environmental and social justice. Value indigenous knowledge system, acknowledging the rich history and heritage of this country as important contributions to nurturing the values contained in the Constitution. 
you must know that some people accuses the curriculum of being Eurocentered because it ignores indigenous knowledge system. But with CAPS, an attempt was made to introduce indigenous knowledge in all subjects. Credibility, quality and efficiency, providing an education that is comparable in quality, breadth and depth to those of other countries. How much currency does your grade 12 certificate have when you go overseas? Is it the same as that of a country like Nigeria, the UK, Britain? That is why you have um, organizations such as the South African Qualification Authority. They do equivalence assessments to see whether an academic qualification obtained in South Africa, what, how can we measure it against that of another country? And the same with those people coming from other countries, they must first go via SAQWA with their qualifications to establish that. You can't come from Britain with your grade 12 certificate, whatever it might be, and then just expect to, to get into first year at university. We must first establish what is that equivalent word from Britain against South African qualifications. So don't undermine our education system to think that it's of no value. We have strong institutions in this country that tries to ensure that. So the national curriculum statement aims to produce learners that are able to identify and solve problems and make decisions using critical and creative thinking. We spoke about that work effectively as individuals and with other members of a team. This is very important today. Teamwork, all right? You cannot function if you cannot function being part of a team. Organize and manage themselves as they end their activities responsibly and effectively collect, organize, and critically evaluate the information there that word comes in again. Communicate effectively using visual, symbolic, and language skills in various modes. Use science and technology effectively, very important. You must be computer literate these days, otherwise you are going to be lost in the 21st century and with the demands of the fourth industrial revolution. Critically showing responsibility towards the environment and the health of others. This is a big issue in the UN. This is, 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 is regarded of, as of prime importance because without looking after the environment, we won't be able to exist. Uh, so you must, you must Make learners aware of that and, and, and also encourage them to, to come up with solutions for our environmental crisis. Demonstrate an understanding of the world as a set of a regulated system by recognizing that problem solving contexts do not exist in isolation. Inclusivity should become a central part of the organization, inclusivity, especially. We're not only talking about the inclusivity in South Africa amongst the different genders, races, people with abilities and those with disabilities, etc. We also talk about people coming from other countries, people with different sexual orientations. We need to welcome everybody and make them feel welcome. Then uh, the time allocation, very important that you understand this. There's no economics in the foundation phase or the intermediate phase. I think they do some, some uh, introduction to EMS. Yeah, I think under natural sciences and technology. I'm, but I'm speaking under correction. And in the senior phase, there you can see there's economic and management science and two hours, two times 60 gives you 120 minutes. But we know we don't get economics in EMS. Economics is one of the sub subjects. 
So that 120 minutes must be divided by three because there's three subject, economics, business studies, and accounting. 120 divided by three gives you 40 minutes per week for the subject, which is not a lot. Then in grade 10 to 12, the time allocated to economics is four hours. Four hours. All right. You know the languages and maths gets four and a half hours. In some schools, they even get more time. But economics get four hours per week, which is also not, sometimes not enough. Right. Then we must look at e economics. As a school subject in paragraph 1.2, some of the main issues in economics are the problem of scarcity. You know, people have unlimited needs, but the means of satisfying those needs are scarce. People therefore have to determine priorities. Now we've been doing this definition since grade eight. You know that an individual earns 1,500 rand per week, but his needs is far more than 1,500 rand. So therefore that individual needs to prioritize, right? And the same must be done by businesses and by the government. And how do they, 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 they do that? Through choice, but that is a problem. Scarce products should be apportioned such that the greatest possible number of needs is satisfied. You know that in, in economics, you look at the problem of production and everything it encompasses, for instance, knowing the principles that determine demand and supply. This is uh, challenging economics, microeconomics. The division problem, in other words, analyzing the principle that govern the proportionment of products, the due consideration of the factors that play part in their production, goes together with that one. The economics of a country cannot be seen in isolation. It should be viewed against the background of national and international events and environmental issues. National is, in other words, within the country. If you look at our country currently, you must ask yourself if you're happy with the way the, the political party is implementing its uh, economic policies. And that you must use then to determine whether you want to give them another chance or not in the uh, national elections that comes up in 2024. Here again, they talk about in the environmental issues, international events, we know that the fuel price is being affected by international events because we must pay for our fuel in foreign currency, which is dollars, and that is why the fuel price is so expensive. So you must understand, you can't just blame the government if the fuel price goes up. We know it goes up once a month in South Africa, the first Wednesday of every month. Is it fair just to blame the government and not look at international events? The collection and interpretation of relevant data on which decisions are based, everyone in some ways concerned with the economy of his or her country. It is therefore important that people understand their personal role and place in the economy and decide in what way they wish to involve to be involved in it, for example, to becoming an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is when you work for yourself. All right. Then economics as a school subject falls into three parts. What are those three parts? It's economic history. We've seen earlier on when we look through that, um, or we'll see you as we go further, what if economic history covers. They say the present is often better understood if it is studied in relation to the, to the past. 
And then what is descriptive economics? This is concerned with the conveyance of factual knowledge of economic institutions and processes. It emphasizes concepts and facts and is less concerned with the interrelationship. In other words, what are the advantages of this? You just give facts. And that is what we, what learners normally enjoy. They don't want to come up with the critical thinking part thereof, which has been covered in the other part of economics, namely economic theory. That is when you make relationship between, between concepts. In other words, when you talk about unemployment, you must talk about how unemployment, if a person is unemployed, he doesn't have money, that means that the person becomes poor. And because he is poor and living in poverty, it means he is not equal to another person. So that, that contributes to inequality and it deepens the inequality. So you started from one concept and you took it out and you brought out two further, further concepts. That is economic theory. The emphasis here is on the interrelationship underlying the macroeconomic system. Themes are not studied as separate blocks of knowledge, but rather as integral part of the total system. It is vital that subject teachers plan the presentation of the subject matter carefully and make a sincere effort, not only to clarify to the learners, but also to apply it in practice. The practice of examples are critical in the teaching of economics to make it accessible to learners. So guys, you need to prepare well for your classes because you're going to see that the learners are inquisitive. There's a lot of things about the economy that they don't understand that they want to make sense of. And if you are not well prepared, you are not going to look good in the class. Right. If we go back to our next slide, what must we look at there? We are now looking at the definition of economics, although we've already come across it. But how does SCAPS define economics? And then we must also look as, at economics as a school subject, which we find in learning unit, in the learning unit one. But first, if we go to the CAPS document, what is CAPS saying about economics? What is economics? Economics is the study about how individuals, businesses, and governments, and any other organization within our society choose to use scarce resources, so the resources to satisfy their numerous needs and wants in a manner that is efficient, equitable, and sustainable. All right. We've talked about that, so I'm not going to talk further about it. The table below indicates the four main topics and corresponding topics in the economic curriculum. Now, economics consists of macroeconomics and microeconomics, economic pursuits, and contemporary economic issues. All right, and you can see that it weighs 25, 25, 25, 25 percent. That gives you 100 percent in total. And then, you know, the exam paper, paper one consists of macroeconomics and economics pursuits, and paper two consists of microeconomics and contemporary economic issues. All right, so what do you study in the, what does macro means? The overall economy. So you first of all, learners that study economics for the first time need to understand the basic concepts, which they should have dealt with in grade eight and nine. The basic economic problem by now, they should have an understanding of it, but not only a theoretical understanding. They must make practical examples to you. What is the circular flow? How does money, goods, and services flow in the economy between individuals or households, businesses, the government, and the foreign sector? Quantitative elements, economic systems, which they've dealt with already, that is prior knowledge, so you must build on that, the so-called scaffolding, and then business cycles. This is uh, normally an essay question, and uh, learners have the habit of, of, of learning it from the top of your head. You said the question in such a way that they need to 
explain it critically, and then you will find that they just give to you what is in the textbook. But all of us uh, started off like that. It's only later on that we understood the importance of critical thinking and problem solving. Microeconomics is a, normally the challenging section. So great. Then starts off with the dynamics of markets, public sector intervention and composition of the South African economy. What is the public sector? Is the government. Should the government get at all involved in the economy? It depends all on political orientation. Are you believing in a planned economy? Then the government runs everything in the economy. Um, then the market economy, the government intervention is discouraged. The mixed economy that we have, we have limited intervention by the government in the economy. And they do that on behalf of the people. For example, provision of electricity in South Africa is being done by an SOE, state-owned enterprise, which is owned by the government. And they do that because the reasoning is that if that is left in the hands of private uh, businesses, the poor will come off worse. Then what do you do in economic pursuits, economic growth and development, money and banking, population and the labor force, the labor market, redress since 1994. This is a very sensitive topic, redress. Because you get different uh, learners in the class. You get those whose parents were advantaged. And now they feel they are being discriminated against because of uh, policies like BBE. And then you have those par whose parents have been disadvantaged. The others were advantaged, if I misstated it. Then you also have those whose parents have been disadvantaged who wants redress, and uh, this has led to, 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 to major confrontations in the classroom, even out of the classroom. Right, contemporary, contemporary means current, what is happening now. Big issue is the issue of unemployment, right, labor relations, uh, the unions in South Africa has fought a whole hard for a fair labor regime. In the past, you could be dismissed for anything at work, for coming late. Today, you can't even be dismissed if you come to work drunk, if the employer can't prove it. In other words, if you're drunk and they don't have the necessary equipment to test you, they will lose if the worker takes them to the CCMA. Right. Some people are saying it is... Uh, skew the labor relations. It's, it's far more in favor of the workers than the employers. And that is why businesses don't want to come invest in South Africa. Globalization is how we fit into the international economy. Issues like inflation, prices are rising, right? Which the Reserve Bank tries to control by raising interest rates. Then contemporary issues, tourism, which we lost out heavily on during COVID. And poverty, poverty, remember I said, goes together with unemployment and other economic issues. Right. Then our next slide 